Today we're going to be learning about finding roots of algebraic expressions. We're going to start off by looking at a law of exponents that we have already learnt, and that is the law for finding the root of a power. And it looks like this. Okay, so here we're finding the nth root of a to the power of m. And when you find that, it is the same, it is equal to a to the power of m divided by n, or you can write it as a to the power of m over n, because remember, a fraction is the same as division. So when you are finding a root of a power, you take the power's exponent and you divide it by the root value. Okay, so now we're going to go and do an example. Our first example is a to the power of 16 b squared c to the power of 14 and we are finding the square root of that. So now remember when you're finding the square root of a number there is an imaginary little number that you can't see over there and that is a 2. So we're going to be dividing by 2 in this one. So we're going to take each of those exponents inside there and divide them by 2. So that's going to give us a to the power of 16 divided by 2 is 8 b to the power of 2 divided by 2 is 1 but we don't need to write the 1 and then c to the power of 14 divided by 2, which is 7. So for that one, we should get 8, a to the power of 8, b, c to the power of 7. Now I'm going to give you a few that you're going to do for yourself. You're going to have three minutes to work on these. Okay, so let's see how those questions went. 
So the first question we had was the cube root, so that means we're going to be dividing by 3, and we're going to do it to each of the different factors inside here. We're going to divide their exponents by 3. So the first one, I've got x cubed. If I divide the 3 by 3, I get 1, so I don't need to write that, I just write x. Then y to the power of 27, I'm going to divide 27 by 3, and that gives me y to the power of 9. And then the last one, z to the power of 9 divided by 3, is z to the power of 3. Question B, this time we're finding the fifth root, so we're going to divide all of those exponents inside there by 5. So this is going to be d to the power of 30 divided by 5 is 6, e to the power of 40 divided by 5 is 8, and f to the power of 5 divided by 5, which is just 1, so it stays f. Then this one over here, again, like in the example that I gave you, you can't see a number outside over here, which means that it's a 2. So we're going to be dividing by 2. So I have p to the power of 20 divided by 2 is p to the power of 10. Then I have q to the power of 8 divided by 2, which is 4, and r to the power of 16 divided by 2, which is 8. And then the last one, this one was a little bit more complicated in that it has a fraction inside, but it's still the same rules apply. We're still going to apply that rule to every single factor inside here, and that, that includes factors that are at the bottom of the fraction, the denominator. So over here, I'm going to start off with my a. I'm, going to, I'm dividing by 7 because I'm finding the 7th root. So it's a to the power of 56 divided by 7 is 8. Then I've got b to the power of 49 divided by 7, which is 7. And then in my denominator, I have c to the power of 70 divided by 7, which is 10. So when you have a fraction like this, you need to apply that rule to the numerator and the denominator. Please take note that every single one of these examples, I only have one term under the root sign. I can't use this rule if I have more than one term. I have to then simplify and get to one term before I can use this rule. So every single one of these examples, you'll see that there are no pluses or minuses. There can be multiplication and there can be division and if there's multiplication and division we just apply it to every single factor inside okay now let's have a look at the next example so in this one i have got the cube root of 27 a to the power of 27 b to the power of 24 c to the power of 12. okay so now this one is the first time we've had a number in our root sign, a big number that isn't an exponent. Now remember that any number has got its own exponent. So over here, I've got an exponent of 27, which is 1. Okay, so now you might be saying, oh, but I can't divide 1 by 3 and not get a fraction. Okay, we can't. But what we can do is we can say, well, 27, I know, is a perfect cube. Remember, we learned about the perfect cubes. We have learned that 27 is the same as 3 cubed. So this is actually the same as the cube root of 3 cubed, a to the power of 27, b to the power of 24, c to the power of 12. So it helps if you know your perfect cubes and your perfect squares and so on because it'll help you to be able to do things like this. So now I know if 27 is 3 cubed, now I can just apply my rule and I can say the cube root of 3 cubed is 3. Then the cube root of 8 to the power of 27, I divide 27 by 3 and that gives me a to the power of 9. The cube root of b to the power of 24 is b to the power of 24 divided by 3 is 8. And the cube root of c to the power of 12 is 12 divided by 3, that is 4. Okay, please note over here that I had two 27s in this question. I had a 27 over here, and I had a 27 over there. But they did not end up giving me the same value. This one gave me a 3, and this one gave me a 9. And the reason is because this one over here is... A big number it's not an exponent this one is an exponent remember when we're using our rule we divide exponents by the the root value we don't divide our big numbers we divide their exponents so over here I changed it first to 3 cubed and then I found the root of it you can also go straight to this answer if you are comfortable doing that remembering that you have to find the cube root of 27 not divide 27 by 3. Okay, so now I'm going to give you a few that you're going to work on for yourself.
and you are going to have again three minutes to complete these questions. Okay, so let's see how those questions went. So the first one, you had the cube root, so that means we're dividing by three. And we have got the number eight, and then x to the power of 30, y to the power of 12, z to the power of 24. Now remember, with the number eight, we can't just divide it by three. So I'm going to need to find what eight is with an exponent that I could divide by three. So eight at the moment is just eight to the power of one. But I can write that as, 2 cubed. That is x to the power of 30, y to the power of 12, z to the power of 24. Now I can apply my rule and I can say I'm dividing all of the exponents by 3. So that gives me 2 to the power of 1 or just 2. x to the power of 30 divided by 3 is 10. y to the power of 12 divided by 3 is 4 and z to the power of 24 divided by 3 is 8. So that's what we should have got for question A. Now, like I said, you could have gone straight from here to here by saying the cube root of 8 is 2. Instead of trying to divide 8 by 2 by 3, you take the cube root of 8 because 8 is not an exponent. Okay, this one over here, we've got the square root. So this time I'm dividing by 2, but only my exponents. So 49, I'm not going to divide by 2. I'm going to find the square root of 49. So I'm going to go straight to that. I'm going to say the square root of 49. I could have written it as 7 squared, like I did over there, but I'm going to go straight to that. I'm going to say the, set, the square root of 49 is 7. Then I'm going to divide all of my exponents by 2. So 14 divided by 2 is 7, so that's d to the power of 7. 16 divided by 2 is 8, so that's e to the power of 8. And 10 divided by 2 
is 5, so that is f to the power of 5. So that's what we should have got for question b. Question c, same thing, we're taking the square root, so we're going to div be dividing exponents by 2, but I need to find the, the square root of this number over here, which is 100. So I'm not dividing 100 by 2, that would give me 50. I can't do that. I'm going to be taking the square root of 100, and that gives me 10. So it's 10 p to the power of 5, because I divided that by 2, q to the power of 1, which I don't write, because I divide that by 2, and r to the power of 3, because I divide that by 2. Okay, and then the last one, question d, we've got the cube root, and it's a fraction again. So once again, I'm going to apply my rule to everything in the numerator and the denominator. But remember, I'm dividing by 3, but only for exponents, not for this. I need to find the cube root of 125. Now, 125 is the same as 5 cubed. So the cube root of 125 is 5. And then the cube root of a to the power of 21 is a to the power of 7. The cube root of b to the power of 24 is b to the power of 8. And the cube root of c to the power of 9 is c cubed. And that is a fraction like that. Okay, so that's what you should get for question D. Right, so now let's go on to our next example. So in this example, we have got uh, 18, the square root of 18, this is quite a big one, a to the power of 5, b to the power of 8, c to the power of 7 times 2 a to the power of 5 b to the power of 6 c to the power of 9. Okay so the first thing I'm going to do over here because if you look at it I'm trying to find the square root. Now if all of these were even exponents and if that was a perfect square and that was a perfect square I would be able to find the square root straight away of every single thing here and then multiply it together if I wanted to or if I needed to. But because I can't, I can't find the square root of 18 because 18 isn't a perfect square. I can't find the square root of 2 because 2 isn't a perfect square. These are also over here. That's an odd number. I can't divide it by 2. I can't divide that by 2. And I can't divide that or that by 2. So what I'm going to do is I'm first going to simplify what is underneath here by using our law that we already know for multiplying bases or multiplying powers with like bases. And then I will find my square root. So I'm first going to simplify. I multiply my numbers together. That gives me 18 times 2 is 36. Then I've got a to the power of 5 times a to the power of 5 is a to the power of 10. b to the power of 8 times b to the power of 6 is b to the power of 14. And c to the power of 7 times c to the power of 9 is c to the power of 16. So this is now what I have to find my square root of. And now that I've done that, you can see 36 is a perfect square. 36 is the same as 6 squared, which means if I could find the square root of it, I will get 6. I'm finding the square root of a to the power of 10, so I must divide the 10 by 2, and that gives me a to the power of 5. Then I'm going to divide 14 by 2, and that gives me 7, so this is b to the power of 7. And I divide 16 by 2, and that gives me 8, so that is c to the power of 8. So that's what you should get for that example. So if you get an example like this, where you have things that are being multiplied together under your root sign, and you can simplify it, then simplify it first, and then find your root. If you are looking at numbers like this that can't be rooted as they stand already, Okay, so now I'm going to give you some that you're going to work on for yourself. And I'm going to give you four minutes to complete these examples.
Okay, so let's see how those questions went. So the first one, we're working with the cube root. So we're going to be dividing by 3. But first, if you look at it, I can't find the cube root of 2 and I can't find the cube root of 8. So I'm going to be multiplying this together. Also, these are not all multiples of 3, so I wouldn't have been able to do that either. So I'm going to be multiplying these together. Let's do it over there. So I have 2 times 4 is 8. x to the power of 5 times x to the power of 4 is x to the power of 9. y to the power of 7 times y squared is y to the power of 9. And z to the power of 9 times z to the power of 9 is z to the power of 18. So this is now what I'm finding the cube root of. And now I'm going to simplify that. So the cube root of 8, 8 is 2 cubed, so the cube root of 8 is 2. Then x to the power of 9, if I cube root that, I'm going to divide the 9 by 3, and that gives me 3. So x to the power of 3, or x cubed. Same thing with the y. It's also the power of 9 divided by 3 is 3. So y to the power of 3, or y cubed. Then I've got z to the power of 18. Divide that by 3, and that gives you z to the power of 6. Okay, so that's question A. Question B, again, we have got to find the square root here, so we're dividing by 2, but if you look, I've got odd exponents and also 25, or 5 and 5, I can't square root, but I will be able to square root 25, which is what I'll get when I multiply those together. So I'm going to multiply together, 5 times 5 is 25, d to the power of 4 times d to the power of 8 is d to the power of 12, d to the power of 7 times, or e to the power of 7 times e is e to the power of 8, and f to the power of 5 times f to the power of 5 is f to the power of 10. Now I'm going to take the square root of that, so I'm going to be taking the square root of 25, and that gives me 5, because 25 is 5 squared. Then the square root of d to the power of 12 is d to the power of 6, when I divide 12 by 2, I get 6. Then I'm going to divide 8 by 2. That gives me e to the power of 4. 10 divided by 2 it gives me 5. So that's f to the power of 5. So that's what you should have got for question B. Then question C. This one, we have got a fraction to worry about over here. So again, I'm trying to find the square root. So I can't find the square root of 50 because it's not a perfect square. The same thing with 8. I can't. And I've got odd exponents over here, which I can't divide by 2. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to simplify this fraction as far as I can and see what I can do then. So I'm going to, over here, say 8 and 50 can both be divided by 2. And that gives me 25. And that gives me 4. Now, if you look, 25 and 4 are both perfect squares, which means that I will be able to square root that. This over here, the p to the power of 7 and b to the power of 3. That gives me p to the power of 4 at the top and 1 at the bottom. q to the power of 7 and q to the power of 9 gives me 1 and q squared at the bottom. Remember over here we're using the rule that when we divide powers with the same base, we subtract their exponents. So that's what I'm doing over here. I'm saying 7 minus 3 gives me 4, so that's p to the power of 4. Here, 9 minus 7 gives me 2, so that's q to the power of 2. And then over here I've got r to the power of 9 and r to the power of 5. That is r to the power of 4 by saying 9 minus 5 is 4, and that is 1 over there. So after I've simplified, this is what I end up with. On the top of my fraction in my numerator, I have 25. Then I've got p to the power of 4, and that's 1, so I don't have to worry about it, and r to the power of 4. In my denominator, I've got a 4. Then I've got q squared. Okay, so that's what my fraction looks like now. And that is what I'm going to be finding the square root of. Okay, so now the square root of 25 is 5. Because 25 is 5 squared. The square root of p to the power of 4 is p squared. Because I divide the 4 by 2. The square root of r to the power of 4 is r squared. Again, I divide 4 by 2. And then in my denominator... I have the square root of 4, which is 2, because 4 is 2 squared. And the square root of q squared is q, because I divide the 2 by 2, and that gives me 1. So that's what you should have got for question C. It was a little bit more complicated. And then question D is this one over here. This time we're finding the cube root. So again, I'm going to multiply the things together inside the bracket. So I've got the cube root of 9 times 3 is 27 a to the power of 10 times a to the power of 5 is a to the power of 15. b to the power of 7 times b to the power of 2 is b to the power of 9. And c to the power of 5 times c to the power of 1 is c to the power of 6. So that, I'm finding the cube root of all of that. So the cube root of 27 is 3. 
Again, remember we're not dividing by 3, we're finding the cube root because it's not an exponent. Then a to the power of 15, I divide 15 because it is an exponent by 3, and that gives me a to the power of 5. b to the power of 9, I divide the 9 by 3, and that gives me b to the power of 3. And c to the power of 6, I divide the 6 by 2 by 3, and I get c to the power of 2. And that's what we should have got for question D. Right, so let's have a look at our last main example for today. And that is this one over here, where we have now got brackets with an exponent inside our root sign. So here I've got, in brackets, a to the power of 7, b, c squared, and that is to the power of 6, and then I'm finding the cube root of that. Okay, so when you get a question like this, there are sometimes, not always, but there are sometimes two ways of doing it. In this example, I can do it two ways. I can look at this whole thing as a power, and I can say it is a base with an exponent, so I'm going to divide the exponent by 3. Okay, so that gives me, the base stays the same, and I just divide the exponent by 3. In the same way as when we were doing these examples over here, and we said over here, I've got x to the power of 9, I divide the 9 by 3, and the x stayed the same. Same thing over here, 9 divided by 3, and the y stayed the same. 18 divided by 3, and the z stayed the same. So the base every time is staying the same. So over here, if I consider this all as one base with its own exponent, I can divide that exponent by 3, because I'm taking the cube root, and then the base is going to stay the same. So that'll, this all will stay a to the power of 7, b, c squared, and I just divide the 6 by 3, and that gives me 2. And then I can simplify that by using my rule of raising a power to a power. So now I'm going to multiply all of them by that exponent outside. So I've got a to the power of 7 times 2 is 14, b to the power of 1 times 2 is 2, and c to the power of 2 times 2 is 4. So that's the one method of doing it. Now this method doesn't always work. It will only work if this exponent over here is a multiple of that number over there outside your root sign. Okay? It won't work if that number, if that exponent is not a multiple of your root uh, your root index. So what we need to do is we have to have another method. Now I like this method for when it does work because it means we end up working with smaller numbers. The other method is to do it like this. So I'm going to write it all down again. And to simplify this bracket first inside the, the root sign. So I can say that's still the cube root and I am going to work this out. So a to the power of 7 times 6 is a to the power of 42 b to the power of 1 times 6 is 6, and c to the power of 2 times 6 is 12. Now you can see over here I'm working with much bigger numbers than I ever ha had over there, which means it's obviously more difficult to work with. That's why I like this method when it works, but it doesn't always work. Okay, so now I'm going to take the cube root by dividing all of the exponents by 3, and 42 divided by 3 is 14, so it's a to the power of 14, 6 divided by 3 is 2, so that's b to the power of 2, and 12 divided by 3 is 4, so that's c to the power of 4. So you get the same answer both ways. But this method is easier, but it will only work if that exponent outside the brackets is the same, or is a multiple rather, of your number outside the root sign over here. Okay, so now I'm going to give you a few that you're going to work on for yourself. Once again, you have 4 minutes to complete these questions.
Okay, so let's see how you went with those questions. So the first question, we have the square root of x to the power of 9, y to the power of 5, z to the power of 7, all in brackets to the power of 6. Now if you look at this, I have got an even exponent over here, and that is a multiple of the two that you can't actually see over there. Okay, so that means I can use my first method to work this out. So I'm going to do that. I'm going to keep this all the same because I'm going to be dividing that exponent by 2. And this is the base of that exponent. So now I'm going to have x to the power of 9, y to the power of 5, z to the power of 7. And that is all to the power of 6 divided by 2, which is 3. Okay, so that's what we should have got over there. And then we're going to go and simplify that by using our rule of raising a power to a power. So now I'm going to multiply my exponents inside the brackets with my exponent outside. So that's going to give me x to the power of 27, y to the power of 15, z to the power of 21. So that's what you should have got for that one. Now you could have used the second method as well, where you simplify the brackets first and then take the square root. It just means you're going to be working with much bigger numbers. Okay. Question B, we have got the cube root of 8, d to the power of 15, e to the power of 18, f to the power of 30, all in brackets to the power of 2. Now on this one, I can't use the first method for this one because I don't have a multiple of 3 over here. And I've got a cube root, so I need to have a multiple of 3. So the only way to do this one is to first simplify my brackets and then take the cube root. So I'm going to do that. So I've got to keep the cube root. I can't get rid of it yet. And I'm going to simplify this. So 8 will become 8 squared, which is 64. d to the power of 15 becomes d to the power of 30. e to the power of 18 becomes e to the power of 36. And f to the power of 30 becomes f to the power of 60. And I'm finding the cube root of that. Okay, so now... I'm going to find the cube root of each of these. Now the cube root of 64, 64 is the same as 4 cubed. So that is 4. The cube root of 64 is 4. Again, that's another one that is helpful for you to know. d to the power of 30, I'm going to divide the 30 by 3, and that gives me d to the power of 10. e to the power of 36, I divide the 36 by 3, that gives me e to the power of 12. And f to the power of 60, divide that by 3, and that gives me f to the power of 20. So that's what you should have got for question B. Then question C. Now we've got a little bit more going on that we have to do over here. So first, if you look at it, I'm finding the square root, which means I need to be able to divide by 2. This over here is an even number, so I will be able to divide that by 2. So I have a choice. I can either simplify inside the brackets and then multiply those together and square root it. Or, if you look at this whole thing over here, all of those are also able to be square rooted. So I can square root that and square root that, and then I can multiply together if I want to. So it's entirely up to you which way you do it. I'm going to show you the method where I square root them separately and then multiply it together. I can't only square root this one and then drop the square root sign. I have to square root everything to be able to drop the square root sign. So I'm going to start off with this over here. I'm going to square root the 16, that gives me 4. Then d to the power of 4, divide the 4 by 2, and that gives me d to the power of 2. e to the power of 14, divide the 14 by 2, that gives me e to the power of 7. And f to the power of 20, divide that by 2, gives me f to the power of 10. So now I've square rooted this part over here. That is being multiplied by, and now I need to square root this over here. Now when I divide that by 2, this base is all going to stay the same. And when I divide by 2, that's going to become a 1, which means I don't need to write the brackets anymore. I only have to write the brackets. I only have to continue writing the brackets if I have an exponent outside here that is still going to need to be sorted out. But if it's just a 1, I don't need to. So I can drop the brackets. When I square root that, I can just drop the brackets. So this is going to become 3 d e cubed f to the power of 9. So my base stays the same. I'm dividing my exponent by 2. Okay, and now I'm going to simplify that. That gives me 4 times 3 is 12. d squared times d is d cubed. e to the power of 7 times e to the power of to the power of 3 is e to the power of 10, and f to the power of 10 times f to the power of 9 is f to the power of 19. Okay, so that is one way of doing it. The other way of doing it, obviously, is to first simplify that 
and multiply those together and then find the square root and you should get to the same answer either way okay then question d the very last question for today was this one over here you have a fraction okay and in this one again just like in the previous one i can first uh go straight ahead and do my root because if you look that is a multiple of three and all of these are perfect cubes these are all multiples of three and 125 is a multiple of three so i can do the same method as it as i did for the previous one or i can simplify this and then simplify my fraction and then find the cube root either way will work i'm going to do the method where i first do the root so that i end up working with smaller numbers okay so over here i am going to find the cube root of everything i can't just find the cube root of some of it i have to find the cube root of everything so 125 the cube root of that is 5. the cube root of a cubed is a the cube root of b to the power of 18 is b to the power of 6. the cube root of c to the power of 6 is c squared so that's what i end up with in my numerator and then in my denominator when I find the cube root of this bracket, remember, the bracket is my base, so I'm going to be finding the cube root and dividing this 3 by 3, which is going to end up cancelling. It's going to turn into a 1, and then I don't need to worry about writing my brackets anymore. So it's just going to be 10 a squared b to the power of 4c cubed. Remember, none of this changes if I'm applying the root to that exponent outside, okay? So now I can just simplify my fraction and that is going to give me 1 over 5 for my numbers. Then I've got a over a squared, that becomes 1 over a. Then I've got b to the power of 6 over b to the power of 4 is b squared over 1. And c squared over c cubed gives me 1 over c. So what you should end up for this whole question is b squared over 5a c and two that's not a five it's a two b squared over two ac so let's fix that b squared over two ac okay so when we divide five by five we get one when we divide ten by five we obviously get two i made a mistake there okay so that's what you should have got for question d and again you should have got that same answer if you did it the other method as well okay and that is how we work with finding the roots of algebraic expressions. Now that we've learned the concepts in this lesson, it's important to practice, practice, practice. If you haven't already got the worksheet that goes with this video, you can find it by clicking on the link in the description below. The worksheet comes with an extra exercise full of questions for you to work on to master the concepts covered in this lesson. If you found this video helpful, please hit the like button so that others can benefit from it too. Also, be sure to subscribe so that you can easily find my other lessons and hit the bell so that you will get notified about lessons as I upload them.